So this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. This is a time like no other. I can see that. Now, during a solar eclipse, particularly a total solar eclipse, several atmospheric phenomena occur. As the moon moves between the Earth and the sun, it blocks out the sun's rays, leading to a temporary decrease in temperature, creating a sudden cooling effect in the area experiencing the eclipse. This can also lead to changes in wind patterns. The cooler air near the ground can cause wind to pick up or change direction. As the sun is blocked out by the moon, the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface decreases dramatically, causing a noticeable dimming of the environment. This sudden change in lighting can create an eerie atmosphere, with colors appearing muted and shadows becoming sharper. Some animals may react to the sudden darkness and changes in temperature by exhibiting unusual behavior. Birds may stop chirping, and nocturnal animals may become active, mistaking the darkness for nighttime. And there are other atmospheric effects that occur by temporarily blocking out the sun that can be measured. When the sky becomes dark enough, planets and bright stars may become visible in the sky, even though it's daytime. And during this solar eclipse, there is a comet. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't make this up. There is a comet that will be visible close to the sun during the eclipse called the Devil's Comet. <laughs> it has twin tails, so it looks like a comet with horns. Oh my God goodness the rituals that are going to go down on that day that is why i plan to give praise and prayers to god because this is not a time to be worried or concerned folks no this is a very exciting time in history the total solar eclipse its beauty is a testament to the molded perfection of the sun, moon, and earth. The fact that it occurs at all and can be precisely predicted is evidence of more than just a design. But who designed it? So, this total solar eclipse, we should be excited because it is a great reminder of the existence of a creator. And it should serve as evidence that all of this was designed. No one can even confirm how the moon got there. It just so happens that a planet with life has a moon. And it just so happens that the moon is the right size and right distance to cover the sun in totality. And it just so happens that the timing is so perfect that you can predict that totality down to the second. For thousands of years they've done this. It sounds like something that was set up by something. You know that NASA is going to launch rockets into the atmosphere during the eclipse, three of them, to study the disturbances in the ionosphere created when the moon eclipses the sun. They are smaller rockets, something you would use to collect data. They are kind of cool looking, like something someone would build in their backyard in an 80s sci-fi movie. 
you know what this reminds me of? Remember Superman 4 and the quest for peace? You know, Superman learns of the dangers posed by nuclear weapons and the potential for global destruction. So he makes a decision to rid the world of all nuclear weapons. And so he collects all the nuclear warheads and hurls them into the sun. But Lex Luthor takes Superman's DNA, which he then places in some type of device that was packaged on one of the missiles to create Nuclear Man. You know you are going to hear people online who are talking about the eclipse. Some of them are going to show you connections to various symbols, prophecies, etc. Like the eclipse is going to pass over Little Egypt in Illinois. That happened last time with the towns of Salem. Remember that? Or that the paths of the 2017 solar eclipse and the 2023 solar eclipse cross paths to form a double X. And you're going to see other connections to various things because that is supposed to happen. It's designed, folks. See, you're going to be able to make number connections to certain dates in history and other numbers like 666. And people are going to make connections with the name of certain cities or towns. All that stuff is designed to show you how perfect the timing is with the creator's design. Not to mention what people are planning to do on that date. Whether that be something dark or something good. Don't look at this occurrence with fear, but with joy as everyone in its path is blessed with the sign that God is real. And I want you to pay attention to the signs and symbols that pop up or that other people point out that may strengthen and support the idea of a creator. I will be right underneath the eye of the eclipse when it passes over, so I'll try my best to capture what images and video footage I can. We have to stop looking at these things as a bad omen of some sort. It's a sign of seasonal change. The sun and moon cause the seasons here on the earth to change because the sun and moon have their own seasons as well, as well as the solar system has its own seasons. Passover is coming up next month as well. When you have a sign for something, usually it's to warn you of something beyond the sign, something behind it, something that's coming later. You don't have a sign up and something big happens as you are looking at the sign. It could be a sign of something to come two weeks later or longer, who knows. After a few minutes when that moon moves out of the way of the sun, you're going to be reminded that God is here for us. So whatever happens, not a problem. What's next then? Are we done here? No? I do find solar eclipse to be interesting especially in the context of history remember that in ancient times people weren't looking up at the sky with their eyes staring into the sun during an eclipse everything just got a little bit dimmer and darker and people recognized it was the moon and they probably had a good idea when it was going to happen just like we do, because they had complex knowledge of the stars. That's all they had to do. That was their entertainment, watching people dance and staring at the stars. What about the three days of darkness? That happened already in Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. 
They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. By the way, does that sound like a solar eclipse to you? By what? The moon? For three days, the sun and moon just stopped moving in that position? Was there something bigger than the moon that passed in front of the sun that took three days to pass? Well, it doesn't say that. What happened in Egypt seems more like a spiritual darkness. It was thick, so thick that they couldn't use torches. It probably was a supernatural paranormal phenomenon that occurred as a result of a spiritual being or angel being present in Egypt at that time. And I talked about the destroyer angel in another video I uploaded recently. You know, those ancient civilizations compared the eclipse to an attempt of the darkness to try and overcome and devour the light. And so people would commonly use magic and perform rituals to make sure that the sun came back. And people in the modern day will be doing that somewhere around the world or in many places around the world, whether they are traditional rituals or dark magic. People who are into that stuff, they are already making plans. That's not a mystery or theory. You can go online and take a look at what witches are going to do. They'll tell you all about it. They expect the highest returns by worshiping whatever gods they worship during the eclipse, by performing rituals. Also, those ancient civilizations looked at a solar eclipse as a time of change in positions of power, especially when it came to the reign of kings. So therefore, there may be those in positions of power who may take that idea seriously. There may be some government leaders who believe it may be a good time to make an important decision about policies or laws. So it's not really fair for me to say that nothing is going to happen during or after the eclipse. So let's take a quick look at some of the things planned for the coming eclipse. Why are schools closing for the eclipse? Here's what you need to know. The impressive swath of territory the event will be visible from stretches for 115 miles from Texas to Maine. Well, here's the thing. When I was a kid in school, they provided us with glasses and we made cardboard box cutouts to observe the reflection of the eclipse. We momentarily paused the school day for the event. It was fun. If you looked at the sun without eye protection, that was your problem. You can go home to your parents blind. That was life. Today, Schools don't want to be responsible for some kids screwing up their eyes on school grounds. Besides, if you're a parent and you know that April 8th might be a crazy day to be out on the streets, you would want to have your kids home, right? What else? National Guard to be deployed for a solar eclipse 2024. So what? They deploy the National Guard for spring break. And all these reports about them deploying the National Guard during the eclipse is in one county in Oklahoma. Not up and down the U.S. And they did that during the last solar eclipse. So what else do we have here? Cell phone carriers working to keep customers connected during total solar eclipse. Okay, so yes, uh, a satellite that is under the eclipse will experience a sudden drop in temperature especially being that high up in the atmosphere but it doesn't necessarily mean that the satellite will malfunction or go out and i think everyone can understand that is a reasonable thing to occur depending on if the satellite was made well or poorly made 
And yes, we know if everyone is on their cell phones at the same time, there could be disruptions in service. The blocking of solar energy could temporarily weaken solar power generators. They may want to restrict air travel if the eclipse might cause a system malfunction on an aircraft. Of course, the airline is not going to take that chance. That's the last thing we need is for people looking up at the eclipse while a plane is falling out of the sky. And see folks, these are the things we are making decisions to do in response to the eclipse. What God does, he already set into motion. But I'm going to come back to this topic soon. I want to touch on some other things when it comes to the upcoming eclipse. When it comes to the end days, we really should stop looking after these things to come before our hearts fail us. In the book of Amos, it reads, He who made the Pleiades and Orion, who turns midnight into dawn and darkens day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the land, the Lord is his name. 